Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 11 of the course on statistics and probability. You will recall that in the last lecture we began the discussion of a very important concept in statistics and that is the concept of dispersion. I discussed with you the difference between an absolute measure of dispersion which measures the dispersion in the same units as the units in which the raw data has been expressed and also I discussed with you the concept of relative measures of dispersion. When we divide an absolute measure of dispersion by the corresponding average, we obtain what is called a relative measure of dispersion and the most important property of this kind of a measure is that it is a pure number and therefore using relative measures of dispersion we are able to compare the variability of two or more data sets. We discussed the range, the coefficient of dispersion, the quartile deviation which is also called the semi interquartile range and also the coefficient of quartile deviation or uske baad aapko yaad hoga ke humne mean deviation ki discussion ka aagaz kiya tha. Today we will continue with the discussion of the mean deviation and I will discuss with you in detail the first case when we deal with the raw data and then the case of the frequency distribution of a continuous variable. Students, aapko yaad hoga ke mean deviation ke hawale se last lecture ke end mein maine aap se ye kaha tha ke jab ke quartile deviation or range dispersion ko measure karte hain around the median in case of the quartile deviation and the mid range in case of the range, mean deviation wo measure hai jis mein hamari attempt ye hoti hai ki hum arithmetic mean ke around dispersion ko measure kare. Let me explain this to you with the help of an example. Suppose that we have data regarding the number of fatalities in motorway accidents in one particular week in one particular city and the values are number of deaths on Sunday due to motorway accidents 4 and for Monday the number is 6 and then 2, 0, 3, 5 and 8. Adding these numbers the total number of deaths for the week comes out to be 28 and dividing this number by 7, the mean number of deaths for the week comes out to be 4 deaths per day. Aap jante hain ke is waqt hamara focus average value nahi balke jo variability pai jati hai is phenomenon mein that is the number of deaths, the variation in the number of deaths from day to day. This is the focus at this time. So, in order to measure the distance of any individual x value from the mean, students, we will simply compute all these distances as you now see on the screen. In the third column of the table that you see, the distances of the x values from the arithmetic mean which is 4 come out to be 0 plus 2 minus 2 minus 4 minus 1 plus 1 and plus 4. Students, aapne note kiya hoga 
k some of these deviations are positive and some of the deviations are negative. Well, that is obvious. Agar hamari x value x bar se badi hogi, to zahir hai ke x minus x bar will come out to be positive. And if our x value is less than the mean, then the deviation will naturally come out to be negative. Lekin ab sawal ye paida hota hai ke kya ye deviations is halat mein hume koi faida de rahi hai? in order to compute the spread of the x values around the mean, you will note that this is not the case. If I add all these deviations with each other, students, the sum comes out to be 0, as you just saw on the screen. Or this means that we are saying overall dispersion of the x values from the mean is 0. But obviously, this is not very correct. Obviously, there is a variability in all these values around the mean. So, there is something wrong and we have to think of some way of overcoming this problem. The easiest way of overcoming this problem is to take the absolute values of all these deviations. So, as you now see on the screen, the absolute values of the deviations are 0, 2, 2, 4, 1, 1 and 4. Adding these absolute deviations, we get 14. And in this way, we have achieved a non-zero sum in our third column. Dividing this sum of 14 by the number of days in the week, that is 7, our mean deviation comes out to be 14 over 7 and that is 2. Ab students, is me do baate note karne ki hai. Ek to ye hai ke ye humne jo average liya hai, this is the mean value of the absolute deviations as I just explained. So, is hawale se, is uh, measure ka jo complete name hai, that is mean absolute deviation. Lekin short karne ke liye, we just say mean deviation. Dusra point ye hai ke ye jo humne absolute values li hai, usme agar aap geometrically dekhe, to there is no problem. Is liye ke any one of these absolute values gives us the distance, the horizontal distance between the mean value and any one individual value. May that individual value be to the right of the mean, may it be to the left of the mean. To in distances may say, koi distance chota hai, koi distance bada hai, or hum in order to get uh, an overall idea, we find the average of these distances. Zahir hai ke chote or bade distances ki jo average value hogi that will be an intermediate value and that intermediate value of the distance um, acts as the measure of dispersion of the values around the mean. So, the formula for the mean deviation is simple. It is the sum of the absolute deviations divided by the number of deviations. Ye to hua the case when we are dealing with raw data as in the example that we just discussed. Now, what will be the formula in the case of group data? The case when we have a frequency distribution, as you now see on the screen, the formula in the case of grouped data is sigma f into modulus of d divided by n. 
अब इस फॉर्मूले की एप्लीकेशन के लिए दो तीन बेसिक स्टेप्स हैं जिनको आप जहन में रखिए द फर्स्ट स्टेप इज टू कंप्यूट द मिड पॉइंट ऑफ एवरी क्लास एंड दैट विल बी डिनोटेड बाय एक्स द सेकेंड स्टेप इज टू कंप्यूट द अरिथमेटिक मीन ऑफ द डेटा सेट यूजिंग एग्जैक्टली द सेम फॉर्मूला दैट वी डिस्कस्ड इन एन अर्लियर लेक्चर एंड दैट इज सिग्मा एफ एक्स ओवर सिग्मा एफ द थर्ड स्टेप इज टू कंस्ट्रक्ट द कॉलम ऑफ एक्स माइनस एक्स बार यानी हर क्लास के मिड पॉइंट में से आप वो अरिथमेटिक मीन सब्ट्रैक्ट कर दीजिए जो आपने अभी कंप्यूट की है दीज डिविएशंस आर द वंस सम ऑफ विच विल बी नेगेटिव एंड सम ऑफ विच विल बी पॉजिटिव और इन्हें हम स्मॉल डी से डिनोट करते हैं लेकिन जैसा थोड़ी देर पहले आपको मैंने बताया कि वी नीड टू टेक द एब्सोल्यूट वैल्यूज ऑफ दीज डिविएशंस सो वी कैन कंस्ट्रक्ट वन मोर कॉलम एंड दैट इज द कॉलम ऑफ modulus of d the last column that we will need to construct is the column of f into modulus of d kyunki har class ki jo frequency hai uske sath hum is absolute deviation ko multiply karenge prior to summing them in order to obtain sigma f modulus of d once we have this sum of course we should divide it by the total number of observations in order to obtain the mean deviation ye tamam steps jo hain main aapko encourage karungi ki aap apni textbook ki koi exercise uthaiye aur in tamam steps ko uske upar practice kijiye so that you feel at home With this formula, आइए अब mean deviation की graphical representation पर गौर करते हैं जैसा कि आपको याद होगा मैंने पिछले lecture में आपको convey किया था कि range जो है that is a horizontal line segment starting from x नॉट and going up to एक्स एम और क्वाटाइल डिविएशन जो है दैट इज हाफ of the horizontal distance between the first quartile and the third quartile maine aapse ye bhi kaha tha ke mean deviation ke case mein bhi aur standard deviation ke liye bhi jo abhi hum thodi der ke baad discuss karenge because the basic concept is just as in the case of the range and the quartile deviation that we are measuring the horizontal spread of our distribution isliye in dono cases mein bhi the measure of spread is depicted as a horizontal line segment so as you now see on the screen the mean deviation is expressed as a horizontal line segment and it is drawn below the x axis starting from the middle of the the distribution that is starting from the point which represents the arithmetic mean students mean deviation ke bare mein humne kafi tafseel ke sath baat kar li ek point bahut aham hai jo main aapko convey karna chahti hu dekhiye ye jo absolute values humne li hain of the deviations this step is not extremely defensible from the mathematical point of view the argument is that we introduce a kind of artificiality in the calculation of the mean deviation by ignoring the algebraic signs of the deviations yani kehne ka maqsad ye hai ki असल में एक वैल्यू नेगेटिव थी और गोया हमने जबरदस्ती उसको पॉजिटिव बना दिया सो फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिकुलर स्टैंड पॉइंट 
the mean deviations formula is not an extremely preferable formula. Hum iske baad jo measure discuss karenge the standard deviation students in that you will notice that this problem has been overcome in such a way that our method is mathematically defensible and there is no problem. Lekin peshtar iske ke hum uski baat kare I still have to discuss with you the relative measure of dispersion corresponding to the mean deviation. Or iska bilkul wohi tariqa hai jis tarah ka range ke case mein ya quartile deviation ke case mein tha. We will simply divide the mean deviation by the mean and obtain what is called the coefficient of mean deviation. The moment we divide the mean deviation by the mean, we obtain a pure number and if I multiply this quantity by 100, my answer will be expressible in percentage form. Students, mean deviation ke hawale se, ek aur point bhi mein aapko convey kar dun. Sometimes, the mean deviation is computed by calculating the deviations not around the mean, but around the median. So, as you now see on the screen, in this case, the formula for the mean deviation becomes sigma modulus of x minus x tilde divided by n. And in the case of grouped data, the formula will be very similar. The only difference is that we have an f coming after the sigma sign and x represents not the individual data values, but the midpoints of the various classes. Or aisa kis situation mein hoga, jab hum deviations mean ki bajaye median ke around compute karenge? Saab zahir hai students, aisa usi case mein hona chahiye na, when the median is the more appropriate average for our data set. Or ye to mein aapko pehle hi convey kar chuki hoon, ke in that situation, when our data set contains a few very high or very low values compared with the bulk of the data, then it is the median which is a better average to use than the arithmetic mean. So, aise situation mein hum ye modified formula istemal kar sakte hain aur is case mein jo corresponding relative measure of dispersion hoga that will be given by coefficient of mean deviation is equal to mean deviation divided by the median. All right, let us now begin the discussion of the standard deviation. The most important and the most widely used measure of dispersion. Students, ye jo maine aap se abhi thodi der pehle kaha ke mean deviation mein ye problem hai ke absolute values jo hum lete hai, this step is not uh, extremely defensible from the mathematical point of view. Iska jo hal humne dhunda hai, wo ye hai ke rather than taking the absolute values, we will square the deviations. And the moment you square the deviations, students, you will find that um, all your problems are over. If your deviation is a negative number, the square is going to be positive. If your deviation is itself positive, obviously, the square is going to be positive. So, is tarah se, hum wo jo negative or positive ke sum hone se hume answer zero milta tha, Usko hum overcome karte hain is situation mein by taking the squares. And when we do this and after that adding all these squares and dividing by the number of observations, this particular quantity is called the variance. Formally speaking, the variance is defined as 
the sum of the squares of the deviations of the x values from the mean and this sum divided by the number of observations. Symbolically, the variance is equal to sigma x minus x bar whole square over n. Ye jo cheez humne abhi abhi define ki the variance is ki bhi bohat ahmiyat hai statistical analysis mein and when you go on to further study in the subject you will realize its uh, significance all the more. Filhal main ye kehna chahti hoon ke standard deviation compute karne se pehle hum variance ki baat karte hain jaisa ke maine abhi ki and once we have defined the variance as the sum of the squares of the deviations of the observations from the mean and this sum divided by n, iske baad taking the positive square root of this quantity, we get what is called the standard deviation. So, as you now see on the screen, the standard deviation is given by the square root of sigma x minus x bar whole square over n. Aye usi example pe wapis chalte hain jiska zikr thodi der pehle mean deviation ke hawale se mein kar rahi thi. As you will recall the x values in that example were 4, 6, 2, 0, 3, 5 and 8. And this data pertained to the number of deaths in motorway accidents during one particular week. Now, as before, when we take the deviations x minus x bar, our values come out to be 0, plus 2, minus 2, minus 4, minus 1, plus 1, and plus 4. Now, this time, we are not going to take the absolute values of these deviations, rather we would like to square each and every one of them and doing so, the third column in our table comes out to be 0, 4, 4, 16, 1, 1 and 16. So, you have seen that all squares obviously positive hain. and now when I add these squares the sum is 42 and dividing 42 by 7 my variance comes out to be 6. Ab yaha pe ek aur bohat important point saamne aata hai. Students you will be interested to know that because of this process of squaring the variance is expressed in square units. Abhi jo example humne consider kiya, isme hum yu kahenge that the variance is equal to 6 squared deaths. Ab zahir hai ki ek ordinary conversation ke point of view se, uh, is baat ka to bilkul koi matlab nahi banta. What do we mean by 6 squared deaths? Lekin, from the mathematical standpoint, this is exactly how it is. Because of the squaring of those deviations, the variance has to be expressed in square units. How do we overcome this problem? Jo maine aap se thodi der pehle kaha, that the standard deviation is defined as the positive square root of the variance. Students, this is the answer to this problem. The moment you take the square root, we are back to our original unit of measurement. So, in this example, when I take the square root of the variance, that is the square root of 6, the answer is 2.45. Yani, is example mein hum ye keh rahe hain, that the standard deviation of the number of deaths is 
آئیے ذرا اس پوائنٹ کو تفصیل کے ساتھ سمجھنے کی کوشش کرتے ہیں آپ کو یاد ہوگا اس اگزامپل میں دی ایوریج نمبر آف ڈیتھس پر ڈے واز فور یعنی ہم گویا یہ کہہ رہے ہیں کہ اگر ان ساتوں دنوں میں اف ایوری سنگل ڈے دے واز دا سیم نمبر آف ڈیتھس فرام موٹر وے ایکسیڈنٹس اف اٹ واز دا سیم نمبر آن ایوری سنگل ڈے دیٹ نمبر ووڈ ہیو بین فور لیکن ہم جانتے ہیں کہ کسی دن کم ڈیتھس ہوئیں کسی دن زیادہ ڈیتھس ہوئیں یہ جو ڈفرنس ہے بٹوین دی ایوریج نمبر آف ڈیتھس دیٹ از فور اینڈ دی انڈیویجول نمبر آف ڈیتھس فار اینی پرٹیکولر ڈے ہم اسٹینڈرڈ ڈیویشن کی روح سے گویا ہم یہ کہہ رہے ہیں کہ وہ جو ڈفرنس ہے نا آن دی ایوریج دیٹ از ایکول ٹو ٹو پوائنٹ فور فائیو ڈیتھس اسٹوڈنٹس دس فارمولا آف دی اسٹینڈرڈ ڈیویشن دیٹ آئی ہیو جسٹ ڈسکسڈ ود یو اس میں تھوڑی سی دقت آ سکتی ہے آپ کو کمپیوٹیشن کرتے ہوئے اف یور ایکس بار از ناٹ ہول نمبر ابھی جو ایگزامپل تھا اس میں تو اٹ واز ویری سمپل اینڈ ایکس بار واز ایکول ٹو فور سو وی ہیڈ نو پرابلم ان کمپیوٹنگ دا ڈیویشنس آف دی انڈیویجول ایکس ویلیوز فرام ایکس بار بٹ اف یور ایکس بار از نمبر لائک ٹو پوائنٹ تھری ون سیون فور تو آپ اگری کریں گے کہ اس سچویشن میں جو ڈیویشنس ہمیں کمپیوٹ کرنی ہوں گی دے ول کم آؤٹ ٹو بی ان ڈیسمس اور پھر جب ان کو اسکوائر کریں گے تو نمبر آف ڈیسمس کافی بڑھ جائیں گے اینڈ دا کیلکولیشن ول بیکم اے بٹ کم بسم سو ان آڈر ٹو اوور کم دس پرابلم آئی ول پرزینٹ ٹو یو دا شارٹ کٹ فارمولا آف دا اسٹینڈرڈ ڈیویشن and as you now see on the screen according to the shortcut formula the standard deviation is equal to the square root of sigma x square over n minus sigma x over n whole square students bazahir ye formula pehle formula se bhi zyada lamba aur mushkil nazar aa raha hai لیکن آپ یقین کیجیے اٹ از مچ ایزیئر ٹو اپلائی دا ریزن از دیٹ ان آڈر ٹو اپلائی دس پرٹیکولر ورژن آف دا فارمولا آل یو نیڈ از ٹو کنسٹرکٹ اے کالم آف ایکس اسکوائر یعنی ایکس کالم تو ظاہر ہے کہ آپ کے پاس پہلے سے ہی موجود ہے آپ کو صرف ایکس اسکوائر کا کالم بنانا ہے اینڈ یو فائنڈ دا سم آف دی ایکس کالم as well as the x square column substitute them in your formula and you obtain your standard deviation applying this formula in our example sigma x comes out to be 28 and sigma x square comes out to be 154 substituting these values in the shortcut formula our answer is 2.45 exactly the same as what we had earlier students the formula that i just discussed with you the original formula as well as the shortcut formula these are valid in the case of raw data what do we do in the case of grouped data exactly the same thing as what we have been doing all through we will insert the f in the formula and as you now see on the screen the original formula becomes standard deviation is equal to the square root of sigma f into x minus x bar whole square divided by n and the shortcut formula becomes the standard deviation is equal to the square root of sigma fx square over n minus sigma fx over n whole square bilkul pehle ki tarah 
जब हमारे पास फ्रीक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन हो तो x जो है दैट रिप्रेजेंट्स द मिड पॉइंट्स ऑफ द क्लासेस लेट अस नाउ अप्लाई दिस फार्मूला टू एन एग्जांपल एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन सपोज दैट वी हैव डेटा रिगार्डिंग द लाइफ ऑफ बल्ब्स produced in a factory suppose that we have taken a sample of 100 bulbs and we put them to test in order to determine their life and upon completion of the test the life of these bulbs came out as you see in the first and second columns of the table four bulbs were such which lasted between 0 and 500 hours nine bulbs were such whose life was somewhere between 5 and 1000 hours 38 bulbs lasted between 10 and 2000 hours and 33 between 20 and 400 hours also 16 bulbs were such whose life was either 400 hours or more jaisa ki aapne dekha uh, ye jo bulbs hain inki life length kafi vary kar rahi hai suppose we want to measure this variation by way of the standard deviation according to the shortcut formula that i conveyed to you all we have to do is to first of all determine the midpoint of every class that is x and then to construct two more columns a column of fx and a column of fx square so as you now see on the screen the column of fx gives us the sum 2437.5 and the column of fx square gives us the sum equal to 78781.25 substituting these values in the formula of the standard deviation the standard deviation comes out to be 13.900 hours in other words 1390 hours so i hope you understand students from all the discussion that we have done until now that this figure of 1390 hours does not represent the mean life of these bulbs agar aap mean life compute karna chahte hain phir to saaf zahir hai ki aap sigma fx over sigma f ki baat karenge and as you can see on the screen the mean life of these bulbs comes out to be 24.37500 hours ye jo 1390 ka figure hai that is not representing the mean life rather it is representing the dispersion the variation of the individual life lengths of those bulbs from the mean standard deviation ko hum graphically kis tarah represent karenge bilkul usi tarah jis tarah main aapke sath pehle discuss kar chuki hu for the range the quartile deviation and the mean deviation so as you now see on the screen the standard deviation is also represented by a horizontal line segment which is drawn under the x axis and which starts from the center of the distribution that is from that point which represents the arithmetic mean students the standard deviation is an absolute measure of dispersion jaisa ki aapne dekha it is expressing the scatter of the distribution in exactly the same units as the units of the data itself jaisa ke 
ट्रैफिक डेथ्स के एग्जाम्पल में हमने देखा कि स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन वॉज ऑल्सो एक्सप्रेस्ड एज सो मैनी डेथ्स और अभी जो एग्जाम्पल हमने बल्ब्स की लाइफ लेंथ का किया उसमें आपने देखा कि 1390 के साथ हमने कहा कि द स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन इज 1390 थ्री नाइन ज़ीरो आवर्स एग्जैक्टली द सेम यूनिट इन विच आवर ओरिजिनल डेटा हैज़ बीन रिप्रजेंटेड वॉट इज द रेलेटिव मेजर ऑफ डिस्पर्जन कॉरस्पॉन्डिंग टू द स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन स्टूडेंट्स एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन इफ आई डिवाइड द स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन बाई द मीन आई ऑप्टेन वॉट इज कॉल्ड द कोफिशेंट ऑफ स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन एंड इफ आई मल्टीप्लाई दिस क्वान्टिटी बाई हंड्रेड आई ऑप्टेन वॉट इज कॉल्ड द कोफिशेंट ऑफ वेरिएशन एंड इट इज अ क्वान्टिटी विच इज ऑफ क्वाइट अ लॉट ऑफ इम्पॉर्टेंस इन स्टेटिस्टिकल एनालिसिस स्टूडेंट्स चूँकि हम एस ओवर एक्स बार को हंड्रेड से मल्टीप्लाई कर रहे हैं इसलिए जाहिर है कि हमारा जो रिजल्ट है दैट विल बी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ अ परसेंटेज और जैसा कि मैं पहले कह चुकी हूँ जब आप परसेंटेज फॉर्म में एक्सप्रेस करेंगे अपने डिस्पर्जन को विच इज़ रेलेटिव टू द मीन तो इसका फ़ायदा ये होता है कि हम कंपेयर कर सकते हैं वेरिएबिलिटी ऑफ टू डिफरेंट डेटा सेट्स इवन इफ द यूनिट्स ऑफ मेजरमेंट ऑफ द टू डेटा सेट्स आर वेरी वेरी डिफरेंट लेट मी एक्सप्लेन दिस पॉइंट टू यू विद द हेल्प ऑफ एन एग्जाम्पल सपोज दैट इन अ पर्टिकुलर ईयर द मीन वीकली अर्निंग्स ऑफ स्किल्ड फैक्ट्री वर्कर्स इन वन पर्टिकुलर कंट्री व नाइनटीन पॉइंट फाइव जीरो डॉलर्स विद अ स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन ऑफ फोर डॉलर्स वाइल फॉर एन अदर कंट्री सपोज दैट द फिगर्स व सेवेंटी फाइव रुपीज एंड ट्वेंटी एट रुपीज रिस्पेक्टिवली आपने देखा कि एक कंट्री में ये जो फिगर्स हैं दे हैव बीन कोटेड इन डॉलर्स जबकि दूसरी कंट्री में द कॉरस्पॉन्डिंग फिगर्स हैव बीन कोटेड इन रुपीज और दूसरी बात यह है कि ये जो फिगर्स मैंने आपको दिए उनसे एकदम से फौरी तौर पे वाजे नहीं हो पाता कि किस कंट्री में देर इज ग्रेटर वेरिएशन इन द वीकली अर्निंग्स ऑफ द वर्कर्स इन सच ए सिचुएशन द कोफिशेंट ऑफ वेरिएशन कम्स टू आवर रेस्क्यू एंड एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन फॉर कंट्री नंबर वन the coefficient of variation is 4 over 19.5 into 100 and that is 20.5% whereas for country number 2 the coefficient of variation is 28 over 75 into 100 and that is 37.3% so आपने देखा कि फॉर कंट्री नंबर टू जहाँ पे अर्निंग्स रुपीस में कोट की जा रही थी द वेरिएशन ऑफ द इंडिविजुअल अर्निंग्स फ्रॉम द मीन इज 37.3 परसेंट जबकि पहली कंट्री जिसमें अर्निंग्स डॉलर्स में कोट की जा रही थी द वेरिएशन इन द अर्निंग्स रिलेटिव टू द मीन इज 20.5 percent only, and so it should be obvious that in the second country, this variability is approximately double of the variability in the first country. इसलिए के repeating myself, पहले country में coefficient of variation is only 20.5 percent, लेकिन दूसरी country में it is 37. 0.3%. Let us consider another example. Suppose that the crop yield from 20 one-acre plots of wheat land cultivated by ordinary methods averages 
35 bushels with a standard deviation of 10 bushels. The yield from similar land treated with a new fertilizer averages 58 bushels also with a standard deviation of 10 bushels. Students, abhi jo example aapne dekha, at first glance you might think that the variability is the same in the untreated land and the treated land. Lekin agar aap thoda sa ghor kare, to aap note karenge that the variability in the yield from farm to farm has decreased in the treated land as compared with the untreated one. And how do I come to this conclusion? The easiest way is to compute the coefficient of variation. So, as you now see on the screen, the coefficient of variation for the untreated land is 10 over 35 into 100 which is 28.57 percent but the same quantity for the treated land comes out to be 10 over 58 into 100 which is 17.24 percent. Aye, is mamle ko thodi si or depth me samajne ki koshish karte hain. Dekhye, untreated land jo hai, us average yield 35 bushels hai. Or jo standard deviation hai, that is 10 bushels. Lekin jo treated land hai, us jo average yield hai, that is much higher than in the case of the untreated one. Is liye ke treated land me average yield jo hai, that is 58 bushels. Ab students samajne ki baat ye hai, ke 10 ka jo figure hai, wo jo variation hai of 10, uski jo significance with reference to 35 hai, wo usse bhoat mukhtalif hai, jo uski significance with reference to 58 banti hai. Kehne ka maqsad ye hai, ke 10 is a much smaller dispersion relative to 58 than what it is relative to 35. And this is exactly the point that is conveyed when we compute the coefficient of variation. All right, today students, we have covered quite a lot of ground. I discussed with you the concept of the mean deviation as well as the coefficient of mean deviation and then we went on to talk about the variance and the standard deviation. The last thing I discussed with you was the relative measure of dispersion known as the coefficient of variation. I would like to encourage you to practice with these concepts by attempting quite a few numerical questions and also by studying these concepts not only in your textbook but in other books as well. My very best wishes to you and until next time, Allah Hafiz.